That's right. For him. There he goes. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> squeaky thing. Well, there's some very interesting things we found with testers. Uh, testers, for some reason, are. We're almost like we're developing mass murderers because they do find the most unspeakably evil things to do. And what a lot of testers were doing uh, was um, uh, they were finding really interesting places to throw his ball. For example, over 200 foot high cliffs. And the dog would leap off this cliff and chasing his ball. So we had to introduce a third law into his mind, which is that he will preserve his uh, well-being. Anyway, enough playing with a dog. I mean, this is a role-playing game, for Christ's sake. I mean, we shouldn't be playing dogs. We should be killing things and, and doing all the things that role-playing games do. <coughs> so let's go on an adventure. Uh, we're going to go into this wood here. And this particular wood, um, this section of the wood, I've just set it up as a test to demonstrate some of his behaviour. He's having a wee at the moment. Yes, he's getting ready to go on an adventure. Uh, this section of the wood we're quite familiar with. I say we, you notice I'm not saying I, I say we now. We're quite familiar with, um, and his gameplay job there is to hunt out treasure, um, to warn me of stuff, to point at stuff uh, that's interesting or that has changed. He has a sixth sense about him that enables him to do it, and that is interesting Ooh. because it's not just me adventuring more, it's me and him. So let's go on and, and uh, go through the level and have a look, uh, have a look at that. Um, he will always try and, he knows we're off, and he's, as you see, he's trying to, he's going out front. Now the other thing you'll notice that we use him for, pure gameplay this, don't do the motion, where's our little mini map? I want to try and get rid of that sucker, because I realise in Fable 1, people could play the whole of Fable 1 on a blasted minimap. And we spent millions of pounds on a 3D world, and then nobody looked at it, they just looked at the minimap. <laughs> Can we use him for one part of that minimap? And oh. the answer is yes, we can. He is your guide. And that now he's becoming a useful gameplay player, not only an emotion. Anyway, let's move on. Well, we're going to go into a different part of the wood now. This is a bit more scary. We haven't been here before. He's investigating his distance a little bit further to give you more time to warn you about things uh, that's going on. And indeed, he spotted something. He hasn't engaged it. That would be aggravating. He spotted something. Let's go and see what he spotted. Now, <clears throat> he has spotted some hops. There they are. Um, so we had them in Fable 1. We've got them in Fable 2. Now, if I want to control him, I can use him, he can attack things. Don't I need a button on him for an attack? No, I've already got a button. And it's uh, called my weapon. He constantly looks at me and what I'm doing. So if I draw my sword, it's going to change his behaviour. If you look at these hobs, he's got a mace, he's got a sword and he's got a gun. If I draw my sword, the biggest risk to me is the guy with the gun. Because I can take out the person with the sword, the mace. So he's going to, because I've got that weapon, he's going to attack that guy. If I pull out the gun, the biggest risk to me is this guy with the mace. Because if he gets to me, I'm defenseless. I can't shoot him because it's such a big gun. So let's go ahead and tell the dog to go and attack. And the way I do that is attacking myself. So I'm aiming. I can take out that far guy. I can take, oops, I can take out the near guy. Um, and not take out the dog. Now, <clears throat> so he's been ultra useful to me now. If it wasn't for him, those guys would be in front of me and I'd have to, have to play around with swords and stuff like that. Unfortunately, he's now got a little bit hurt. Now, some of you heartless journalists may be saying at this point, I don't want a mutty, moochy, fluffy dog with me the whole of the adventure, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, if you don't want him with you, just walk away. You can just walk away from him and leave him uh, with his paw paw uh, and say goodbye to your doggy. <laughs> now, you're a pretty heartless bastard if you do. <laughs> he will. He loves you, absolutely, and he will do everything in his power to get back to you. So what we're recreating here is Disney's Fantastic Voyage. 
he, if you're in a pub an hour later and you're sitting having a playing a pub game or or you're chatting somebody up, you will hear a scratching at the door, and the door will open, and in will come this blooded <coughs> mess, and everyone will turn around and go, <gasps> My God! Who would do such a terrible thing to a dog? And they'll all turn to you. That's going to make you feel something. And that's all I want this feature is about. There is gameplay there. It's going to help you through dungeons. It's going to, you know, it's going to be involved in the story. But it's, oh, the whole of this feature is just to make you feel something. It's to make you care about something. And that's why I'm passionate about it. Because if in the end you care about something, then it will, um, it will stay with you. Anyway, well, well, we will. Here later. Just oops, press the wrong button, sorry, that's dangerous. Um, yeah, it's all happy. Then chase the person. So that is the that's the main feature. If you care about him, then it's gonna be a lot more interesting in terms of story. We're measuring how much you care about him and involving the dog in the story more or less depending on how much you care about him. Um, and it's going to be, if you care about this dog, it's going to be a rough ride for you. You're going to remember it. And that's what will make Fe Fable 2 a great game. Yeah, all the things you're expecting in Fable 2, and I'm going to show you some of them in a minute, are there. But there had to be some new innovations, and this is one of them. Any questions about the dog? Can you be killed? I'm not talking about the, the dog's death at all because it, it will really ruin things for people. Uh, so will his barking uh, make it uh, difficult or impossible to sneak up? No, he, that would aggravate you. And absolutely not. He was out of audible range of those hobs. Um, he will never he will never betray you in that way. I just have one other. You say you can morph from one breed to another. Do you think a breed at the start, or is that just based on your behavior? No, at the very start, when you start as a kid like you did in phase <coughs> one, and you we don't... We don't have big arrows going, dog, dog, look, look. <laughs> uh, what you'll notice is you'll be playing around and there'll be this little dog just following you around. And it's sort of a very cute moment. You, know, you just good. turn around the dog just stops. And oh. It's just a very it's a lovely moment. And that's what I want. I want an emotion. I want some, that's what I want. That's the unique thing that Fable can give you, is that emotion that you have. Thanks. Was there any thought of having your child join you and become part of your adventure? Um, we Is have got some three? quests with your kids, um, and I say kids because you can get married more than once Fine. if you want <laughs> to have more than one kid. But we have to be very, very careful with children, because if we, you know, if the ratings board, if we start work, working with violence with kids, it's going to, you know, it's going to turn and bite us bad. So I'd love to involve your children much, much more, but um, so you, you know, you go a certain distance. Do you question? work with the idea that a dog who is leading its owner it thinks it's in the alpha male position? It's a, we actually work with dog psychologists, mm -hmm. and it's not, you're right, there's a lot of dogs that let, don't go out front, and um, certainly as a distance based thing. There's actually, if there's actually a, a line uh -huh. which dogs call behaviorally cross, they're going from alpha male to explore. Okay. And we, we actually met the, the Depending on the relationship with the dog, he will change his distance. For example, some of that sometimes is based on your location. If you're in town, he's right here the whole time. You're the alpha male. He's following you really close by him because he's going to aggravate you if he's going off and there's so many distractions. If you walk in a building, in a shop, he'll sit outside. And he, you know, he's understand. If you're in the wild, if you're exploring, if it's a familiar place, as you saw there, he's off, he's scurrying, he's going off. Online, especially if you're on a path and he's confident you know where you're going, he can, he's got time to explore. So we've really looked into the behaviour of dogs. Because the, the cool thing about this is, is he looks so much like a dog, you understand what's in his mind. And that's a huge advantage. Any other questions? Should we quickly have a look at a fly through of the Fable world? Yes. Just to, um, just as a teaser. Incidentally, Everything you've seen today, nobody at Lionhead or Microsoft wanted me to show anything. And I had to stamp my feet and be the pedantic prima donna that I sometimes are. And so I just said, no, look, we've got to show it because it's important for us to talk about it. So all this engine, everything to do with the dog, everything you're going to see now, it's all work in progress. This is a huge, huge...